Greetings, family. I invite you to this 417 Hertz frequency to cleanse the aura and increase positive energy. As you cleanse your aura, also shield your energy. And accept all negative energies and then release them. Awaken the law of attraction within to work out the multi-dimensional self within oneself. Enjoy this contemplative meditation. May I find you awakened, enlivened, energized, fully activated, and one with the whole. You are divine mind. Thank you, and namaste. Stillness and blessings, family. Love and light. Help and holiness. Stillness and blessings. Love and light, health and wholeness. Stillness and blessings. Love and light, health and wholeness. On this Friday 13th. Hope everybody in the highest vibratory frequency possible. Living the best version of themselves possible. As for me, I'm feeling good. You know, once again, it's been another rainy day. I had to move through it, you know. We all have to do what we have to do. I know it's been raining, a lot of raining in different parts of the, of the, of the country, you know, depending on what state you're in. Um, so I hope uh, we all been all making good through that. Um, I debated whether I was going to do a, a, a pull today, but um, after a few, few uh, conversations with a few people, um, some subscribers, some not, but just people uh, that I deal with, I decided to do a reading on the collective energy, and um, it was all good, you know. That's why I played the 417 frequency to remove blocks and get us all into a, 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 a space of receptivity um, to receive some of the, uh, the goodness that's influxing amongst the, the positivity. The positivity is only present. I mean, the, uh, 
some of the goodness to influx in through the negativity. The negativity is only present or only appears to give us something to work through. But the reading was very good, and uh, the cards pretty much speak for themselves, so I want to do a lot of um, intuitive for the cards. The first card was material and spiritual prosperity. Um, that speaks for itself. Um, me and my lifetime, I chose to get my spiritual man right before I even start seeking um, material, material abundance. But it's always good to have nice things, you know, in in the outer sense of things. But it's even uh, more important to have your inner man in alignment with the universe. Um, the second card was light. And if your inner man in line with the universe, your light bearing witness of itself, it don't need no help. The third card was triumph. If your light bearing witness of itself, because you recognize it don't need no help, only for you to build it up uh, or become one with it, then you already moving moving in triumph. Um, outside of that, the, the cards was good, but the spirit guides want us to know to be aware of deception and enemy. Your haters are close. And on the bottom of the deck was firm foundation. If your found if your if your foundation is firm, then you'll be prepared for whatever whatever surface. And you will be triumphant. Just trust your process. With that, we're gonna move into the four words. You see. First four word was, I don't know why this song kept ringing in my head, but TLC. And the message from, from that, from this song, y'all familiar with it, uh, don't go chasing waterfalls. But that was the four word, don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick to your program. A question has the tendency to become bigger and bigger unless it finds a suitable answer. I was I was listening to kids today and their dialogue had me write that down because it was question after question after question after question and and I realized the reason that we're blessed to even have kids to keep us connected with the inner child in ourself. A question has the tendency to become bigger and bigger unless it finds a suitable answer. Therefore, I'm thankful for children for reminding us we're not really adults. We, we're just children with more responsibility. I'll let y'all marinate on that. When the questions become a straight line, it no longer seeks an outside answer. When the question becomes a straight line, it no longer seeks an outside answer. Learning is a holistic process which keeps on taking place. We're, we're, we're always learning for learning's sake, even if we're growing in reverse. Make sure your shoe fit, no matter which foot you got it on. It's better to pursue what your heart desire rather accepting what you end up accepting just to get by. With that, we're going to proceed into the ADK loop, book two. Law of Life was still in the section of Ascended Masters, uh, Cosmic and Divine Beings. And we're on, y'all give me a second.
we're on Serapis Bay. Page 277. Put on these glasses so I can see. Serapis Bay is from the realm of Bay. Hence the name wherein his dwelling. Bay also means son of. He is the great disciplinarian known through the centuries for the action of strict discipline. The best teachers are strict dis disciplinarians. And the best students discipline themselves. He is the great disciplinarian known through the centuries for the action of strict discipline. Real discipline is not stipulation over another, which would thwart the innate progress, but instead it is a holding in check of your own human qualities so that the inner or real self can have its expression. This is very essential to the attainment of the ascension, which is the culmination of all your embodiments. He came as a guardian to Earth's evolutions and took physical embodiment, as many did. It is said that he came from Venus. His inner service is in the fourth sphere, and he works with the Christ selves or the higher selves of the unascended life streams there. Serapis was the priest in the Ascension Temple on Atlantis before it sank in to whom was delegated the task of taking a portion of the ascension flame to safety. He, with 40 of the brotherhood, sailed in a boat to Egypt according to the directions they had been given. Just after their landing on the Nile River in the locality, in the locality of Luxor, they were aware of the sinking of Atlantis by the rumble and shaking of the earth. He established a temple there for the ascension flame and has been the guardian of that flame ever since. Some trusted brother in physical embodiment would stand guard when he was at any levels in between embodiments. Since the sinking of Atlantis around 12,000 years, since the sinking of Atlantis around 12,000 years ago, he has had nearly all embodiments in Egypt. While in embodiment in Egypt as a Kenaton IV and a Menephis III, he built the temples at Thebes and at Karnak. He was King Leonidas of Sparta and well known for the discipline at that time. He was in embodiment in Greece and had something to do with the creating of the Colossus at Rhodes at that time. He was Phidias in one embodiment and Athenian architect and sculptor. Chos Sculpture. He was Phidias in one embodiment, an Athenian architect and sculptor. He brought forth the design of the Parthenon and supervised the building of it. According to one encyclopedia, it was dedicated in 438 BC. He made the ascension around 400 BC, and after that, he became Chohan of the fourth ray, under which comes the action of the ascension flame. He is the master in charge of the Brotherhood at Luxor, Egypt. He works with Seraphim. Serapis Bay has gold hair and his eyes are amber color. Celeste Ada is his keynote. His electronic pattern is a heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your likes, thank you for your shares, thank you for your donations, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing the space of this energy with me. My, my cash app is dollar sign S-A-I-W-O-O-D-A-G-O-D. -O -O That's dollar sign, Sawu to God. Hope everyone have a material and spiritual prosperous night. A light filled night in a triumphant night. Stillness and blessings, love and light, health and holiness. Be safe, one.